section 9.5 of chapter 9 introduces the concept of dilution of solutions. And this involves lowering the concentration of a solution by adding solvent only. For example, if you bought a frozen can of orange juice at the store, came home, put it in a large pitcher, directions usually read to add three cans of water for every one can of frozen orange juice concentrate. By adding more solvent, you are lowering the concentration of solution. If all you are doing is adding solvent, then it must be true that the total amount of solute that you have at the beginning has to equal the total amount of solute you have at the end of the dilution because all you've done is add solvent only. If that's true, then either the moles or mass of the solute initial, or at the beginning, has to equal the moles or mass of solute present at the end, final. And we looked in our previous example on molarity that molarity times volume equals moles. Or in other words, concentration initial times volume initial equals concentration final times volume final. So C1, V1 refer to initial and final concentrations. V1, V2 refer to initial and final volumes of solution. This is the dilution equation that applies to all different types of concentration expressions. Please note that it is valid for dilutions only. This equation is not valid whenever you are looking at a stoichiometry problem involving a chemical reaction. This is not a chemical reaction process that we're describing. It's just a physical change, a physical dilution process by adding solvent only. And of course, usually that solvent would be water. Let's take a look at two different types of dilution calculations. The first, what is the molarity of a solution made by diluting 175 mils of a 3.15 molar hydrochloric acid solution to a final volume of 500 mils? In other words, adding water to our initial solution until we have a final volume of 500 mils. There is a lot of data in this problem. It's always helpful to label data when a problem has a large number of data that has to be handled correctly. Our initial molarity is 3.15 mol molar. So I'm labeling that M1 because in this instance, our concentration is a molarity. So our initial molarity, 3.15 molar, our initial volume, 175 milliliters. We add water until we have a new larger total volume of 500 milliliters. What will our new molarity be? So notice I've taken our C1V1 equals C2V2 and just substituted molarity in for concentration since that's what we're looking at. M1V1 equals M2V2, and we're solving this for M2. Very easy algebra. Just divide both sides of the equation by V2, and we get M2 equals M1V1 divided by V2. And at this point, it's just a simple plug and chug calculation where we're plugging in for M1V1 the values of the initial molarity and initial volume, 3.15 molar and 175 milliliters. Now I'll pause here just to address a question that some of you may have. Wait a minute, don't we have to change uh, volume from milliliters into liters if we were trying to get a mole amount? And that is true. But notice this is a dilution calculation and our volume units are going to cancel. So it doesn't matter that we've left them in milliliter units. 
the V1 and V2 units of volume milliliters will cancel out. So our M1, 3.15 molar, our V1, 175 milliliters, and our V2, 500 milliliters. Looking at the dimensional analysis, our milliliter units are canceling, and we have a unit of molarity, which is what we are solving for. Taking a calculator and going through the calculation, 3.15 times 175 divided by 500, and I get a new lower concentration molarity with three sig figs of 1.10 molar. So our final molarity is lower than our initial molarity, indicating that this solution has been diluted. Let's take a look at our second problem. Determine the initial volume in milliliters of a 12.5% mass volume solution of ammonium nitrate needed to prepare 300 milliliters of a 4.75 mass volume percent ammonium nitrate solution. So again, we're doing a dilution process. We're taking a 12.5 mass volume percent ammonium nitrate solution and lowering its concentration down to 4.75% by diluting with water to a total new volume of 300 milliliters. What did that initial volume have to be? So again, labeling our data, our initial concentration, 12.5% mass volume. Our initial volume, we don't know, we're trying to find in milliliters. Our diluted lower concentration is 4.75% mass volume and our total volume of diluted solution 300 milliliters. So C1V1 equals C2V2. We've labeled our data Solving for V1, we divide both sides of the equation by C1, and we get V1 equals C2 V2 divided by C1. Again, very simple algebraic manipulation. Once we have our equation solved for our initial volume, we just plug and chug. Our diluted Final concentration is 4.75%. Our final volume, 300 milliliters. Our initial concentration, C1, is 12.5%. Looking at the setup, our mass volume percent units are canceling. We're left with a volume, uh, excuse me, a unit of milliliters in the numerator. This will be the unit appropriate for our initial volume. And taking a calculator and double checking the calculation, 4.75 times 300 equals divided by 12.5, and I get 114 milliliters of our initial 12.5% mass volume ammonium nitrate solution is needed. So answer V1, 114 milliliters.